Oh, you beautiful people in Webtown. I am stoked to talk about this comic because this is something that I guarantee you moved the needle uh, back in the 90s for Image Comics. This is the Savage Dragon number 10. And let me preface this by explaining what's going on here. This is Jimbo the Mighty Lobster. Eric Larson, creator of the Savage Dragon, did something totally cool that only happens once in a great while in the comic book industry. He let the fans create their own characters and submit their characters to him. And he promised that he would put the character he liked the most into a comic book. And it turned out it was Jimbo the Mighty Lobster who was selected. He didn't steal the character. The character still belongs to the man who created it. He just let this character be in the pages of a comic book. Could you imagine being a kid and have this happen, how fun this would be for you? Man, it'd be fun for me. What a dream. And you flip this open and Jimbo is down at the boat docks talking about how they need to lay low because obviously they're committing crimes. I don't, you know, I don't know exactly. Maybe they're bringing drugs in. That would be uh, something that would make sense down at the docks. Illegal DVD players. I don't know. And Jimbo has this filthy mouth. Nobody can f***ing beat me. You f***ing hear me? Nobody. I'm f***ing tired of hiding. I'll show you sons of is who's boss. I'm gonna f***ing find that f***ing dragon. I'll f***ing kick his f***ing ass. Yell, fat boy, yell. Scream your god head off. Ain't no one gonna hear ya. Ain't no one gonna help ya. Don't kill me, don't kill me, don't kill me, don't kill me. And then uh, Dragon, of course, shows up for Cutthroat. Last time we ran into each other, I was badly hurt, and you had Hellraiser with you. I'll still kick your ass, and I, I still kicked your ass, and I'm all better now. He holds up his hand, because if I, if I recall correctly, they cut the dragon's hand off, and it grew back. Don't come any closer, pig. I'll cut him. You don't have a prayer, creep. Don't kill me, don't kill me, don't kill me. I mean it. And they get in this big fight, you know? He just knocks him. Not even a big fight. One punch, knockout, right? Oh, two punch knockout, and then it's over, so pretty weak. And Jimbo's down here, f***ing wimps. I'll f***ing show them. Why is he on a plane? Well, I guess he's on a plane now. Went from being on the shipyard to being on a plane. That doesn't really make any sense. Uh, you know, uh, honestly, this comic's very light on story, but you do get these incredible nipples. Holy crap. Could he have, could he have drawn them anymore? And you're starting to realize, like, what happened to the Savage Dragon here in present day, where it's graphic nudity and, and uh, threesomes and such going on. And uh, you can see where Eric's mind has always been. And when I was, you know, a 12-year-old boy, this was a totally awesome comic book, I must admit. Totally awesome. So, uh, he, you know, Dragon finally runs into Jimbo. There you f***ing are. Thought I'd have to tear apart the whole f***ing city to get your f***ing attention. What's your beef, handsome? Nothing. I just want to kick the shit out of you, that's all. He just wants to fight the dragon and show that he's the toughest guy in town. That wasn't very nice, creep. I like my lobster tender and sweet. Get ready to bleed, asshole. I'm the f***ing strongest f***er around. Don't f*** with Jimbo the Mighty Lobster. Well, I hadn't planned on it, jerk. I wanted to catch a Cubs game, but I'll oblige. Pow! Take notes, chump. What I've got in store for you is a textbook tail kicking. F that. I got a better f***ing idea. Eat this f***ing sh asshole. Ha! That does it. I'm pissed. They fight a bunch more. They fight a bunch more. They just fight and fight and fight in this epic fight. So this, this guy who invented this character gets to see his character battle with the Savage Dragon. Time to wrap this up, sucker, and hits him. Boom. Jimbo, you f***ing got it, and punches him back, and Dragon just lays down. And, you know, Alex, the, the female cop who's super sexy, runs up. Stay back, please. Don't hurt him anymore. I beat him. I f***ing beat him. Yeah, yeah. I won. Well, what happened? I took a dive, Alex. We're too evenly matched. All he wanted was to show the world he's stronger than me. I don't think it's worth destroying the whole damn city to prove otherwise. 
I figured he'd leave once he won. Oh, once I was down. But he's getting away. Let him. He won't get far. I'll get Youngblood or somebody to go after him. Chicago's safe. I did my job. And then you go into The Fiend, and <laughs> this comic's so good, you know? You guys need to go out and just pick up the first 25, 30 issues in the Savage Dragon. You'll have a lot of fun with it. And here, the ultimate character creating contest. So here's uh, Jimbo to Mighty Lobster, as drawn by Jason Merritt. And Eric, you know, talks about how this all happened and why he, why he came up with this idea. And this is a great little read, too. Uh, and then he shows off some more characters that were submitted to him. We have Geezer, the Fly Slayer, Arachnus. This actually became a comic book. Michael A. Or or Michael A. Ortiz had this turned into a comic book after this, which is pretty cool. Not from Image. I can't recall the company, but that's out there. You might be able to find it on mycomicshop.com. Prick, Ultra Dog, Problem Child. That's a good name. Crimson Spade. Not a very good name. Oh, who's this guy? I don't know, it just says Foosh. It doesn't, doesn't have a name. It's got a little trademark for it. So this is pretty freaking awesome. And then see, look, Dear Eric, my character, Blank, is much better than Jimbo to Mighty Lobster. How could you have chosen Jimbo over Blank? You've got to be insane. Blank is the coolest character ever created. Someday, I'll be drawing comics for a living, and I'll introduce Blank, and Blank will become the most popular character in the whole world. And won't you feel like an idiot? Feeling hurt and rejected, Blank, creator of Blank. Oh, and there's Pyramid Man by Jeff Cable. That little kid did drew that. That's so cute. So this is just what makes Eric Larson awesome. Oh, the real face of Dung. John Fogarty, completely oblivious to the fact that he's got his arm around a couple hundred pounds of Dung. The character from Eric Larson's popular Savage Dragon comic book series is actually based on a former Bay Area disc jockey. Mr. Dung can currently be heard from 6 to 10 p.m. on station WLLZ 98.7 in Detroit. Give him a listen, baby, and be on the lookout for the comic book character Dung, appearing next in the pages of the Deadly Duo 2. And then here we have Eric and talk about the things he loves. Hostess Snowballs. I love Hostess Snowballs, too. Coffee Crisp. Don't know. Captain Crunch with Crunch Berries. Sure. Curly Fries. Okay. I'm assuming he means seasoned fries that happen to be curly. He loves Amy Mann. That was a... a a singer back in the day that a lot of people older than me really liked. I didn't get it. Despises having my f***ing name misspelled. Wow. Josh Icorn. Okay. Wedgies. People who rip off my f***ing characters. On Starting Image, it was about f***ing time. God, he's got a filthy ass mouth. Somebody needs to wash his mouth out with soap and scrub his brain with a hot SOS pad to get all that dirty porn out of it. Anyway, then we get to, of course, you know, Eric always just, man, what a great creator back then to take so much time to answer fans' questions, to spend, you know, everybody else just gives him a page. Eric's happy to give, oh my gosh. Andrew Sprague did the Savage Dragon for Halloween. How about that? Trolling for babes. Yes, you are, young man. Yes, you indeed are. And that is an amazing, amazing costume. Very good. Very, very good. Yeah, Wildstar. Whatever. So that's the Savage Dragon number 10 featuring Jimbo to Mighty Lobster, created by a fan of the Savage Dragon. And uh, if, you are, if you are an independent comic book creator, uh, it doesn't matter if you're comic skate or not. All that matters is you're looking to move the needle. This is definitely a way to do it. If you end up with a hit by, you know, issue four or five, you might want to consider doing a competition to keep your fans more invested in you and your creation. I would highly recommend that if you want to move the needle. If you don't want to move the needle, don't do it. You know, you can just refuse the needle. That's fine too. But here on, uh, here on Testosterone Overload, we love people who can move the needle. And we are going to continue to expose those kind of comic books each and every day. I look forward to tomorrow with all you beautiful people out there in Webtown. Please don't be afraid to give this review a like. Please hit that subscription button. It really helps. Hit that ding dong for notifications so you know the minute I upload another totally awesome comic book review from Testosterone Overload. And I'll see you all tomorrow.